Which functional food and beverage trends do I predict will be the biggest in 2023? So it's that glorious time of year again where my content creation morphs into a collection of top five lists that either gives me the chance to highlight some key insights from the last year or provides me the opportunity to put my reputation on the line as a forward-leaning CPG strategist and make predictions about the coming year. Believe it or not, this will be the fifth annual list of functional food and beverage trend predictions. For those that are new to my content, I only have one big rule for these annual trend prediction lists. I don't allow carryover predictions from the previous years. This makes it more challenging, but also a little strange because trends are typically multi-year in nature with the strongest ones lasting a decade or more. So if you do have some extra time and want to multiply your insights, I'd suggest checking out my previous annual functional food and beverage trend predictions content pieces because they are still hugely relevant and packed with value. I hope you don't mind the interruption, but I wanted to quickly mention something that I'm super excited about. This year's top five functional food and beverage trend predictions is extra special because it's powered by New Live Science in their 100% plant-based compound estrogen that increases the absorption of many vital nutrients promoting a healthy gut environment. Whether it's a functional food or beverage application, you want your customers absorbing and getting the most out of what they are consuming, right? I know you do, so make sure that you check out newlivescience.com to learn more. But Let's jump into this year's list. These are in no particular order, but here are my predictions for five of the biggest functional food and beverage trends that you'll be seeing play out in 2023. I'm going to call this first one a three R's effect, and those three R's include reshoring, regenerative, and recycled. This triangle is partly driven by the CPG business ecosystem looking to manage risk, but also with consumers across the globe becoming more and more concerned about the state of the environment. I'll provide some insights first around reshoring. The idea of reshoring, or at least nearshoring closer to the U.S., has mostly been talk for years because of the cost benefit not necessarily making sense until now. Now you have elevated geopolitical risk, you have supply chain disruptions and export restrictions, They've gotten to the point where the extra costs are worth incurring for the benefits of quicker delivery and a more reliable supply chain. As for regenerative agriculture, this term will start showing up more on product packaging and marketing within the functional food and beverage space. For those looking to pave the way, just be aware that it will take some education as surveys show that I think one fifth of consumers haven't heard the term regenerative agriculture. That being said, the same survey showed 70% of consumers agree that the food that they eat should be grown on farms that use sustainable practices. Then finally, with recycling or I guess upcycling technically, why are consumers growing more and more interested in this? Well, these upcycled ingredients are deemed better for the environment in general and help tackle the issue of food waste. This further shows how sustainability and Things like morals or ethics are playing a greater influence on choices across the functional food and beverage space. Whether it's any of the three R's effect, younger consumers are more willing to change their food choices if they can reduce their carbon footprint. These sourcing elements don't override other purchase criteria like taste or convenience though. But health of the environment is an element that consumers are starting to consider when thinking about holistic health. Moving on to the next trend prediction, I believe algae is going to have a huge year within the functional food and beverage space, both inside and surrounding the products. Let's talk about the inside of the products first. Seaweed has long been a dietary staple in Asian countries and consumption of spirulina dates to the Aztecs. So this isn't new by any means, but functional food and beverage usages of algae continue to expand into today. Few reasons I think it's perfect timing for algae to have its moment is one, it contributes significantly to a more sustainable food system. 
Secondly, it has a high overall nutritional content and consumer familiarity. And then thirdly, it provides promising scalability and cost levels for business integration. And then finally, as product developers are on the hunt for finding like better and more environmentally friendly sources of plant-based protein to feed our planet, algae could be the next big thing in alternative proteins. Microalgae is 50 to 60% protein, but unlike many soy protein products where the protein has been isolated from the plant, microalgae is generally used as a whole food ingredient and retains more than just its protein. The other way I think you'll see algae more integrated into the space is through product packaging. In a bid to offer sustainable alternatives to conventional packaging, suppliers are looking to natural materials, including seaweed, for inspiration. Because it's capable of growing around like 60 times faster than land-based crops and sequestering about 20 times more carbon per acre than forests, seaweed is a sustainability champion. It also happens to be a versatile base for countless packaging applications like flexible film, seaweed paper, and even rigid materials. Shifting now to the third trend that I see permeating across the functional food and beverage market is what I've dubbed the confidentially functional effect. Now, I don't want to jinx everything by talking about the likelihood of the R word, but probabilities are high and consumer behavior around it will matter a lot. Yes, Runaway inflation seems to be under control, but rising economic pressures have increased consumer attention towards being more value conscious in 2023. As a strategist, here's what I find super interesting to model out though. Look back at the functional food and beverage landscape in the late 2000s during the Great Recession. And most categories were either super nascent or didn't even exist. Also, what was really like the big consumer behavior shift of that time? Trade downs into private label. Fast forward to today, what's changed? One, immense growth in functional food and beverage categories. Secondly, you have supply chain difficulties. Thirdly, consumer interest in buying goods that are in line with their beliefs. Why do I think this all points towards more private label activity within functional foods and beverages? Well, firstly, the demand justifies creation of them. Secondly, retailers will be attracted to tighter control over the retail supply chain. Thirdly, retailers have already kind of started adjusting towards private label 2.0, which I state as like moving away from just copycatting some of the best selling products to actually utilizing brand development strategies to appeal to younger consumer cohorts that do kind of care about more than just like the value aspect of the products that they buy. Moving on to the fourth trend prediction, and this is going to be kind of a correlation to a functional food and beverage trend that I mentioned two years ago in that 2021 prediction list. That previous one was dubbed the burnout syndrome, and it was related to the tipping point where consumers would prioritize mental health. Basically, I was saying that eating and drinking for mental health would be a huge trend. I would say that materialized into a reality, but here's where I'm going to go with this next. That feeling of being in that hamster wheel of competition isn't going away anytime soon in America. If anything, it's amplified over the last few years. These consumers that have prioritized their mental health for years are seeing results, but faced with the current economic outlook and possibility of even more stress, do they look to escape it? I don't want to make that seem dark, like turning to vices or addiction or even worse, but what I mean is seeking out self-soothing functional food and beverage solutions. This might be the year we see more of society embrace escapism as a legitimate form of mental health management. There are really many ways to achieve this through the benign, like nostalgic flavors, middle of the road, like mood enhancing ingredients, such as nootropics and adaptogens to even the more interesting psychoactive plants and compounds, some of which could be federally illegal at the current time. And now the final functional food and beverage trend prediction of 2023, which is what I'm calling old to new tech, it's all disruptive. So 
Let's start with a spin on an old technology that's disrupting the functional food and beverage space, and that's precision fermentation. It's my opinion that maybe before the end of the decade is over, commercial scale precision fermentation facilities will be like data centers, which eventually became ubiquitous. And like data centers, commercial scale precision fermentation manufacturing facilities could one day be relied upon to make a vast array of vital products. Not only is precision fermentation tech being explored as a launch pad for cultivating new protein sources, but it's also highly versatile in its capability to be tailored towards producing other key food and beverage ingredients for texturizing or flavoring or stabilizing and preservation. The new technology that I want to mention is artificial intelligence. For those unfamiliar with that term, AI is defined as a machine's ability to autonomously perceive, understand, make decisions about, and react to its environment. AI is the heartbeat of the precision fermentation movement. These deep learning platforms can design ingredients from billions of edible sequences and apply precise fermentation parameters for producing them. It's really mind-blowing, to be honest. While that's only one usage of AI, it will undoubtedly revolutionize many aspects of the functional food and beverage space, from agriculture to food safety, concept development to production, marketing to personalization, and through countless other back-of-the-house business use cases. But what did you guys think of my list? Do you have a different top five? I'd love to hear them in the comments of this YouTube video or reaching out to me on any of my social media accounts that are always in the contents description. But I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also help me get to my short-term goal of 2,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically three-fourths of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.